A new bill which seeks to regulate religious conversions has been introduced in the western state of Maharashtra, which is ruled by the Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party. And Christians are worried. It is going to affect Christians in particular because propagation is something which is very intrinsic in the faith. Termed as the Freedom of Religion Act, but widely known as the Anti-Conversion Law, this legislation is already in force in five states. It effectively seeks to discourage evangelism. A mere complaint under this law is enough for Hindu nationalists to get pastors and Christian workers arrested. The Christians in particular, we have seen from the from the, our past experiences, even where there has been no uh, such law, the people, the Christians, the, the pastors, the evangelists have been under pressure and under threat, and they have been subjected to oppression. Anti-conversion laws say that no one can convert from one religion to another using force allurement or fraudulent means. Due to these vague terms, any social work could be seen as allurement and a mention of hell as force. The legislation also requires people to either inform authorities about their conversions or seek permission before they can convert. Therefore, it is feared that Christians could become a soft target. This law will give that legitimacy in the hands of the state and the non-state actors also who would may be holding the majority opinion. This law has existed in some states since the 1960s and Hindu nationalists routinely lodge police complaints against pastors and Christian workers, alleging that they are converting Hindus by using allurement or force. However, there has not been any known conviction under it. So why would a government like to bring in such a law? Though it's a private bill, but it has the tacit support of the government, these are the forces which want the society to be polarized. It basically comes from a culture to control people. They control their destinies, control their choice, subjugate them to interfere in their very personal decisions. One of the undeclared objectives of the anti-conversion law is to resist mass conversion of Dalits, who were earlier recognized as untouchables. Dalits, also known as scheduled castes, have remained at the bottom of a rigid social hierarchy in India for centuries. About 70% of India's Christians are from Dalit backgrounds. As per the anti-conversion laws, it is easy to convert Dalit Christians to Hinduism, Christians to Hinduism. Whereas, from converting people from Hinduism to Christianity, it is very tough. India's constitution provides for special protections and reservations in educational institutions and jobs for all Dalits provided they have not converted away from Hinduism. A presidential order passed in 1950 and subsequent amendments ruled that Dalits who convert to Christianity or Islam will not qualify for the benefits. To my mind, this 1950 presidential order was the first attack on religious freedom. It is believed that the presidential order, just like the anti-conversion laws, seeks to discourage conversion of Dalits to Christianity. Dalit Christians went to the Supreme Court in 2004 to challenge the discriminatory order. The court asked some statutory bodies to look into the issue, and all of them spoke in favour of revoking the 1950 order. But the government is yet to file its response. Though this order has been challenged in the Supreme Court, it is before the Supreme Court, and the government strangely has been shying away from filing their affidavit and has been protracting this litigation beyond 
any uh, you would say a limit for the last nine years whether it was the UPA government and now the NDA government they have failed to file their affidavit and come before the court and say that this is the rationale why reservations should not be extended to the Dalit Christians or Dalit Muslims. Even as the government continues to delay giving its reply to the highest court, a court in the southern state of Kerala, which has a sizable Christian population, recently ruled that if Dalit Christians return to Hinduism, they would be eligible for the protections. Christians fear this will promote a campaign started by Hindu nationalist forces to convert Christians back to Hinduism. Justice remains a distant dream for them. This judgment will certainly promote reconversions because there has been a denial, a continuous denial of the rights of Christians and Muslims when they convert into Christianity.